Virginia to here in Johannesburg, uh, but uh, to talk about the launch of the uh, latest Pan-African Civil Rights Organization. It's, it's the launch director of it, uh, Kumi Naidu, now joins me. It's called Africa Rising for Justice, Peace and Dignity. Kumi, most people will know you as uh, an environmental uh, environmentalist, Greenpeace and trying to save the planet. This is a new incarnation for you. Red T-shirt, May 25, hashtag Africans Rising. What's happening? What's going on? Well, basically, you know, when for a long time we've yeah. been talking about the need for there to be greater social, economic, and political integration in the African continent. If our leaders were totally honest, they would note that most of our national boundaries do not make any economic, linguistic, cultural, environmental, or any other sense. These were boundaries drawn up by colonialism at a conference in Berlin. However, we are stuck with these boundaries, and we need to look at how we, in fact, not allow ourselves to be limited you know by what we can do together because individually each of our countries even the strongest amongst us cannot stand against the united states china and the eu i mean the eu integration was driven by the need to actually aggregate their power to deal with china and the u.s so i've jokingly been saying for a long time uh since the Europe adopted the euro, I said if Europe can have a euro, I don't see why Africa can't have an afro, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and beautiful as afro is, I was not yeah. referring to the air style here, but, but more as a symbol of how we can actually unite. But the it red was... We. Oh, yeah. So, so this initiative was started by the African Trade Union Congress, the African Religious Leaders Council, the Pan-African Climate Justice Alliance, and various regional mm -hmm. civil society groupings. Uh, when folks heard I was coming back from Greenpeace, in fact, they came and found me at the uh, climate negotiations in Paris and said, hey, comrade, you're coming back, so please come back and help us, mm -hmm. because people know that I've been always pushing for Pan-African unity. So now it's broadened up. We had a conference in Arusha in August last year where we adopted the Kilimanjaro Declaration and I urge people to actually read the declaration and sign it and get involved because it's a very simple one-page vision of recasting the narrative of Africa because our leaders let us down in multiple ways even how they engage with Europe and the, and the rest of the world, for example. You know, the African Union, for example, 75% of its budget is paid by the uh, European Union. So we be hoping you know, that it and, and our leaders can find money to build palaces in rural areas or military expenditure and so on. But when it comes to doing the right thing and having a sense of pride, they don't. But why we chose red, by the way, is to remember the people who gave the lives for our liberation mm. yeah, in South Africa, in the colonial fights. But secondly, also to draw attention to the bleeding mm. of Africa's wealth out of the continent. We have massive illegal financial flows out of the continent that is impacting on us. So today was the day to launch okay. a new movement. It's just a start. What are you hoping to do? What are you mobilizing <coughs> against? So the areas we want to focus on is we want to put an end to corruption with impunity. Uh, we want obviously poverty and inequality. And inequality is a big issue because what we're seeing is on this African Liberation Day, we look back and we say liberation has only been delivered to the one to five percent mm. of the people of Africa as is happening elsewhere in the world as well because it's a handful at the top that are really benefiting and crumbs are being thrown to rest uh, of the folks. But also climate and environmental justice, shrinking democratic space and gender equality. Those are the six uh, uh, but how do you do this across 55 nations? Uh, uh, I'm trying to think, I'm sitting in Harare. My issues is unemployment, I could be corruption, state brutality. Someone's sitting in Zambia and he's saying, my leader is not allowed to get off the plane to, to, to witness a, a, a trial. How, there's so many different things going on at the same time. How does a Pan-African movement deal with so many issues? Uh, when you are looking at perhaps four or five, climate change might not be a big thing in Botswana for, for the people. Oh, it's a big thing everywhere yeah. on the yeah. continent. Yes. Uh, well, the process, I mean? the process we followed, that's a very good yeah. question. What was the process we followed? Mm -hmm. So we did uh, online and offline consultations mm -hmm. all throughout last year. And, uh, you know, th there was a lots of very brutal things mm -hmm. that people said about ourselves. You know, even civil society leaders said, you know, we must ask ourselves about how 
uh, pure we are. Mm. You know, we are closer in our lifestyle sometimes, not everybody, mm. but the top leadership of the civil society is closer mm. to the 1% of society and so on. And people talked about the contradictions of mm. resourcing and so on. And then we said, well, okay, let's bring people together in what we call a validation conference in Arusha, Tanzania in August last year. And we had representatives from 44 African countries as well as from the diaspora. And people from all of these countries, we talked about many other issues. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, these are the issues, the six issues that Resonate. totally resonates with all of us. Okay. So how are you going to keep the momentum? Because we see movements start, hashtag this, and people get excited, they, they march for two days, and then nothing changes, and then they go back to their state of oppression, suffering, and woe is me kind of scenario. How is this going to be different going forward? Well, firstly, uh, there is something different about this pan-African mm. effort, right? Firstly, it is one of the few times that, in recent times, where we've consciously said right at the get-go, Africa is Africa as a whole. So, you know, quite often North Africa is not included in civil society efforts at unification. So I'm very happy to say that's been very positive North African participation. Secondly, we said we need to have our brothers and sisters in the diaspora involved. And right from the get-go, like today as we sit here, mm -hmm. just about now in Oakland, California, in Washington, D.C., and so on, Black Lives Matter folks are organizing events to commemorate the launch of this movement. But we have been painstakingly behind the scenes working for more than 18 months now. We have a very clear strategy of how we're going to build this movement going forward. And already, even though we only launched officially today, we've had to do two solidarity missions to Gambia when Yaya Jame didn't want to leave to support civil society. We added, I think, a positive uh, contribution there. So moving forward, we're going to focus on leadership development and, inv and, and really support young people to take leadership. We're going to focus on uh, solidarity work so that if there is violations in a particular country, much as we appreciate voices from outside mm -hmm. of the continent, it's critically important that Africans stand for Africans mm -hmm. first because otherwise it allows our governments to say foreign interference and so blah, blah. Our governments, our leaders, many of them control the state machinery, the police, the army, air force, you name it, and they put down any kind of resistance, often with severe brutality how are you going to be able to fight this kind of um, force particularly when elections happen the African Union goes there endorses these elections and they say these are legitimate governments well you know Nelson Mandela said it always seems impossible until it's done trying to transform the broken governance on the continent uh, will sound impossible and it is a Herculean task. It's a, you know, Mount Everest to climb, right? But we as Africans cannot accept any longer that after so many years of so-called liberation, given the fact that Africa is the richest continent underneath the ground, that is precisely, by the way, one of the reasons I would argue we are one of the poorest uh, continents above the ground, what the academics call the resource curse. Mm -hmm. Given all of this, we refuse to accept that the level of health provision, education, uh, sanitation, water, and how we are preparing to deal with the impact of climate change, which is already wreaking havoc on the continent, we refuse to accept that the performance of our governments right now is anywhere close to adequate. So the solutions are coming from young people and, and by the way another big commitment of this whole movement is to put young people at the center so just to uh, confirm i was the launch director right. as of tomorrow a young activist from gambia mm. mamad uh, lamin sadikin takes over as the uh, so as you, launch you'll director be guidance I, I will step back and be the board chair uh, to to you know uh, and we will launch a mm. proper African-wide election. I would invite people mm. to go to the Africans web, uh, Rising website. There's a document mm. called the Vision Document, which sets out every... Like, for example, we have said within five years, we want this movement 100% to be funded solely by African sources. Right. right? right. And yesterday I was on a debate with the AU ambassador to Washington, D.C. on Voice of America. And I said to her, please, uh, Madam Ambassador, can you make a similar commitment? And... She, she, she acknowledged it's embarrassment, 
that the AU is Could funded. Do. Are you uh, not f fomenting insurrection? No, it's not <laughs> insurrection. Uh, you, you know, let, let's, let's be very clear. Mm. Every day on this continent, mm. millions of our people die from malaria, tuberculosis, and HIV AIDS. Mm. Every day on this continent, there are people who are in prison for no legitimate reason. Mm. There are people who get killed for no legitimate reason and so on. This is not what African Liberation Day is supposed mm. to be. And by the way, it's very convenient to call it this African Day, mm. Africa Day. When you go and you look at what Kwame Nkrumah said at the OAU in the outset, it was about celebrating our liberation from colonialism. Mm. And we need to say, this is not liberation. This is, cannot be understood where a handful of people have benefited and the vast majority still live in dehumanizing conflict. If it means that saying this, speaking out and telling the truth, and if somebody wants to say it's you know, fomenting mm -hmm. uh, dissent, then so be it. Because you know, Albert Einstein once said that the, biggest, the, 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 the most highest mm -hmm. form of patriotism is in fact dissent when there's injustice and you know we make no apologies for standing up against injustice. Right, we've got to go but if people want to get involved and be soldiers in this Africans rising how, how do they do it? So very simple if they can read the Kilimanjaro declaration it's one page if you support it sign on to it and endorse it and then you get you will then start getting weekly and monthly updates of activities opportunities for training events and so on and I would make an appeal to young people in conclusion. Mm -hmm. Young people must resist the idea when adults say to them, young people are the leaders of tomorrow. With the realities of climate change, if they wait, they might not be here tomorrow. tomorrow. So and they have, have to take leadership now and bring to the public domain fresh ideas, new thinking, and so that our current leaders, many of whom should retire peacefully and spend time with their families, should be encouraged to do so as well. Kumi Naidu, it's uh, great to have you back on the continent. We wish you the best of luck with... Uh, Hashtag Africans Rising, uh, and uh, certainly let's see what happens in the coming days and that the youth have heeded your call. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you.